How many times have you done a great job in the large group part of your program and then it's like you just lose the students when you transition to the small group part? If that's you, you're not alone. I was asked about that recently and so I put down a couple of thoughts and you know, as I was thinking about it, um, the whole idea of going from a large group to a small group in the same program is kind of a newer idea. It used to be where you would just have a dedicated program for one specific kind of a target group. So uh, kind of following the purpose-driven youth ministry model, maybe large group time would be a bit more kind of outreach-oriented or seeker-friendly, seeker-focused. And then small groups would happen uh, in neighborhoods or around town at a different time and a different day of the week. And that would be for a little bit more, for the kids who were a little bit more committed. But now maybe it's because schedules are busy or, or whatever. We've, we've uh, adopted, many people anyway, have adopted uh, program styles where it, they include uh, large group and small groups in the same programming time. So if that's you, I want to help you to make that, trans, uh, that transition as smooth as possible. So the first way to make that happen is to go ahead and give students the first question that's going to be asked in small group. And this is just simple. It's kind of like as you're winding down with your large group time, you just say something like, hey, we're going to go to small groups and let me just go ahead and give you a heads up. The first question that y'all are going to talk about in your groups is, and just give them the question. And you want that question to be kind of an easy, lighthearted, uh, icebreaker type question that allows anybody and everybody around the circle to have something to contribute with that. And the benefit of doing that, you got a couple of benefits. One is it creates continuity between the large group part of your program and then the small groups that they're about to go to. It's not like these are two completely separate uh, separate aspects. These are connected. It's con There's continuity there. So it, you basically create a bridge from what you were talking about in your message to what they're going to be talking about in the group. And another benefit to that is that if you've got kids that, you know, think a little bit more or process a little bit more. They don't want to be called on on the spot to give an answer or give a response. So if you go ahead and give them the question that they're going to be starting off with, then they can take a few moments and actually think about it, and they'll be more inclined to engage with that question when they get to group. The next thing I would tell you to make that transition smooth is build in some buffer time. There's no reason to you know, shuffle them off as quick as possible to group. Instead, if you've ever been around like a, um, you know, a school campus when the, when the bell rings and the kids kind of shuffle out of the classrooms and into the hallways as they're changing classes, I mean, man, it's like, a, it's like a beehive. It's a social beehive is what it is. They're talking to their friends. They're catching up about this. They're saying, hey, did you hear about what happened there? It, it's just kids need time to process. Kids need a little bit of downtime, a little bit of space. The other thing that that's going to do is it allows you to say, hey, if you need to, go ahead and hit the restroom during this time or grab a snack during this time. And that way, when they get to group, they're not, you know, 10 minutes into small group and two, two or three of the kids are saying, hey, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. And because, you know, that will actually kill the whole flow of the conversation that's happening. So go ahead, give them five minutes, maybe put a countdown timer on the screen, play some music, but give them a few minutes and say, you can socialize, you can stand up, stretch your legs, um, hit the restroom, grab a snack, whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, and then when the timer goes off or after five minutes, we expect you to be in your small group. And then the other thing I would tell you to make that transition smooth is simply give direction to new students. Odds are good that you'll have somebody in the room that doesn't quite know where they're supposed to be headed. So you're going to stand up and say something like, uh, hey, it's time for small group. And they're going to be scratching their head like, what? What's that? Where do I go? And if now if they're there with a friend, hopefully the friend uh, is a good enough friend to kind of get them going in the right direction. But sometimes you'll have people there who just really don't know. And so what you want to do in that moment is say, um, uh, if you don't know where to go, if you're new here or don't know where to go, feel free to come up and see me. I'll be hanging out up here for a few minutes afterward and I'll get you pointed in the right direction direction. So if you want to see kind of how that whole sequence would be put together as you're as you're finishing up, maybe you're coming out of a prayer or something like that, you would say something like, hey, okay, so now it's time for small groups. The very first question that you're going to have in your group to kind of get the conversation going is what comes to your mind when you think about a vacation? Um, 
Uh, also, look, we're going to give you a couple of minutes to stretch your legs, to stand up, to hit the restroom, to socialize a little bit. If you need to grab a snack right now, now is the time. If you need to go to the restroom, now is the time. You want to you know, laugh it up, tell your neighbor a quick joke, now is the time. But in five minutes, we want to see you in your groups. And by the way, if you're new here and if you don't know where to go, come see me. I'll be up here hanging out for a few minutes um, before groups start and I will get you pointed in the right direction. So that's exactly how you would do it. And that um, that kind of sequence of, of ideas of, this, of the, the first question in the group and giving them some buffer time and then giving them, if they don't know where to go, some direction uh, you know, to come see you, that will help to make that transition from large group to small group as smooth as it can be.